Welcome back to Cerner Hacks. In this episode, we're going to talk about the top 10 tricks that I use in Cerner to make my day go a bit easier. Some of these tricks are very quick and easy to learn, and hopefully you can use them in your arsenal as well. Trick number one, copying information quickly from the banner bar. Okay, so trick number one is a very quick one. Whenever you have something on the banner bar that you want to copy, so like say a MRN number and counter number, rather than having to write it down on a piece of paper and copy it somewhere else, all you need to do is double click it. It appears that nothing's happened. However, it has copied onto the clipboard. Now all you have to do is paste with control V and there you go. Let's do that again with the PHN number and control V. There it goes. If you're on a Mac, it is the command button instead of control. Trick number two, comparing quickly the current medications that the patient is taking in the hospital compared to the home medications that they normally take. So trick number two is actually quite easy. It's when you're going to look at the current medications the patient is on right now in the hospital and you want to compare to what they were taking at home. So where you go is the current medications in the light menu. That'll display the current medications the patient is on in the hospital as an inpatient. To quickly look at side by side, you can click the med history box and here pops up what they were taking at home. So you can organize the name in terms of alphabetical order. So you can see here that the atorvastatin and metformin have been discontinued very easily. Trick number three, getting rid of the annoying pop-up when you're doing orders in the order section. This next tip comes up when we order medications from the quick orders or the orders menu and you come up with this pop-up here which uh, prompts you to associate a condition with the medication you're ordering. So the way we get rid of this is to uncheck the always default association checkbox here and rather than using the association view and you go to the list view and this looks much cleaner. Sign off on that. So next time we go and make an order, let's say this one here, we don't get that pop up anymore. Trick number four, adding active issues very quickly using Fessor. So this next tip has to do with populating your active issues list and it's better just to dictate in and I find and this is how you do it. You click on here and make sure your fessor is activated. COPD. Hypertension. It also works for quick orders so when you're in quick orders when you go into new order entry hydrochlorothiazide and it may not appear on the drop down menu at first but when you press the space bar then your options appear. Trick number five, changing the names of the diagnoses that appear on your screen. This next tip is about changing your active issues problem name. Sometimes it's a little too general and that's actually nice to have the exact reason for why the patient is in. So rather than trust trauma in this case, what we've done is on the active order section, we can click on the name and modify the name of trust trauma. And we, what we can do now is we can put in exactly uh, what they're in for rib fractures, three to five on left. So now in the assessment plan view, you can see the rib fractures number three to four on the left. It gives a lot more information about why the patient is in rather than just trauma to chest. Trick number six, finding a disposition heading that's appropriate, discharge planning issues. One pet peeve of mine is that I couldn't get a disposition problem name onto Cerner. This is very important when you're trying to communicate for the rest of the team members who are reading your note about when this person may be going home and even where they're going. So I found another one that's very close to disposition, which is discharge planning issues. And interesting, you can actually just type in the first couple of letters from each word and you can see discharge planning issues pops up here and that now becomes my disposition in the assessment plan. Trick number seven, where to find sleep logs and other hard to find documentation. Have you ever tried finding documents that you know they're in Cerner, but it's just not showing up in your document list? The first thing I would do is change filter just to make sure you have everything checked off. Sometimes by default, some of these are unchecked. So I'd recommend you check the ones that you think you need, such as provide documentation, the ED notes, general medicine documentation, care plans, and provider progress notes. 
And if you still can't find the document that you need, try the doc menu. So over here, you can go to documentation list. So in this doc menu documentation, will be listed all the documents that's ever been written on this patient for this encounter. This would include any error documentations. And sometimes I ask for sleep logs that don't show up in the late menu documentation section. So you have to actually go into the dark menu to find the sleep logs here. Trick number eight, use a transferred med rec when you take over a patient's care. Whenever I take over a patient from another attending, I oftentimes will go through the med rec transfer here we can just double check and make sure that these patients are on exactly what. So we can just double check quickly going down this list for this 90 year old lady who's now post-op. We might not want her on Celebrex. So now we'll go through these medications and all the orders one by one. Once you've completed everything, you make sure there's just no required fields missing. And then we go to sign it off and there you've completed the transfer med rec. And then we'll make sure that everything that is ordered is what you want. Number nine, granting access to your census list for covering staff and residents. This next step is useful if you have residents or students or even preceptors or even a locum taking over your patients while they're in the hospital. You can proxy your patient list to them by clicking my patients and going into this function here, which is the edit function and going into proxy. Uh, then we'll set up a new proxy under a provider and you search patient's name. So let's say it's Smith, John, and we can click on the type of access we want, full access, and a certain date if they're ending rotation on a certain date. And we can apply it, and here we go. And now when you click OK, they will have access to your list. So when they go into their list here, they can simply move it over to the active list, and it will appear on their screen as well. And finally, trick number 10. Have you lost your third row workspace when you're using a different computer or working from home? Let's get around that problem. My final tip of the day is that when we're oftentimes working on a home computer, our screen sizes may be a bit different um, and we miss the third row, which is where we input our data. To fix this problem, we can go into the 100% view and we just change it to, let's say, a 75% view. You can see that column pop back in depending on your screen size and your screen resolution. So hopefully those 10 tips helped you in some way. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe.